Welcome to the Sales Lead Dog Podcast, hosted by CRM technology and sales process expert, Christopher Smith, talking with sales leaders that have separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Listen to find out how the best of the best achieve success with their team and CRM technology. And remember, unless you are the lead dog, the view never changes. Welcome to Sales Lead Dog. Today we have joining us Joey Kircher. Joey, welcome to Sales Lead Dog. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Joey, tell us a little bit about yourself and your company. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm uh, here in Denver, Colorado. Um, I've uh, so my background is uh, marketing. Uh, I used to have a, an experiential marketing agency for the past 13 years, really focused on live events um, and really focused on that human aspect of uh, sales. And then um, obviously COVID has uh, not likened people in person. So we're now digital. (laughs) Uh, So I've uh, recently started a new agency called Unicorn Puff, where we are a a brain trust of entrepreneurs. There's three founders that came together with all different backgrounds. And what we're doing, we're helping uh, B2B, uh, B2B uh, service agencies uh, where usually it's like software development or UI UX web design companies where we're working with founders uh, where they're either their sales have stalled or they're, they're trying to scale. And what we do is we come in helping out with uh, uh, a couple of things, um, not a traditional agency, but like focus on strategy, sales and marketing all together. Uh, Cause typically it's not, it's usually a, a deeper problem they're having uh, yeah. on scaling. So that's kind of what we do. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love the name Unicorn Puff too. That's really creative. <laughs> Thank you. Well, <laughs> Joey, tell me about, I, I like to start the podcast this way. Um, tell me about the three things that have really contributed to your success so far. Yeah, I think, um, you know, just thinking of my entrepreneur journey uh, is, you know, failing fast and, and learning from it and, and not, and not looking back of like, ah, oh, that sucks. And um, I think it's just um, really trying to, to grow from that and um, continue to, uh, to learn. Cause you know, obviously even this past year, right. I've, we've, you know, you, you hit a wall and you, you got to keep driving. Um, I think, uh, you know, some, finding something that you're really passionate about, you know, I'm passionate about people uh, and, you know, I, I love helping people on, on different levels on marketing. And I, I think uh, that's been helping, you know, get through the harder times of, of uh, being an entrepreneur. So. Yeah. Yeah. I love the fail fast line as entrepreneurs. So many people we fight to struggle and keep it going, keep it going and not realizing that if we, let it fail and move on, you know, pivot and learn and, and keep going. Um, we can actually probably be more successful. So, yeah. Um, tell us about how you got your start in sales. Yeah. So back when I was, uh, actually, this is way back in my neighborhood. Like I think I was seven years old and went, uh, uh, I'm an identical triplet. So there's two more of me running around here in Denver. And uh, we would, uh, our neighbor bought us a lawnmower that we would pay off during the summer. And how we would get lawns, we also got a tr- an edger. So my brother and I would go to house to house, hey, you know, just as a, an entry point to, to mow their lawn, we'll, we'll edge your lawn for $10 and we can mow it for 20. <laughs> so um, that's, that's kind of how we started. I, I think we also went door to door selling fire starters and things like that. And right. um, I've always had this like entrepreneur mindset. Um, and I think the other piece of it is me being an identical triplet is very unique because, you know, I have two other people that look like me. I'm trying to like fit in uh, and, you know, try to get my uh, my dad to, to see me or um, uh, to recognize me. And I think I understood, uh, started learning at a younger age, more of those like, psychological, like, hey, how can I be seen and how can people see? Well, it, I think what it really comes down to also is 
um, just understanding what human needs are and what humans want. Humans don't want to be sold to, you know, we, we want, we want to have a, uh, uh, a reason to say no. Uh, and, and, uh, I think a lot of people, even nowadays, now that we, you know, you and I can't be doing this in person, uh, we have to do this over the phone and, you know, understanding that like we're, uh, we want to be, uh, someone that, uh, can be heard uh, and and um, not told what to do because I think that's kind of my stride in life. You know, back to the three things that got me excited. I I don't like to be told what to do, and that was my that's why I keep driving to go. So um, yeah, I think um, just changing the the concept of like, hey, I need to sell to you. To hey, how can I be that uh, be a value to you? Because if they can make if they, if you can make that decision that I'm value to the, to you, then it's a great relationship and uh, and that's a great way to sell. And that's so important to create that, like you said, the human connection. You know, because we're all people. We're dealing another person. We have our own issues, baggage, concerns, worries, and being able to understand that is so important. How do you? put yourself in your, your customers, or your prospects shoes, so you can relate to them on that human level. Yeah. I, and I think just, just the way you're, I mean, for the first contact, right? Like, I mean, I do a lot of LinkedIn outreach, a lot of email outreach. You know, I, I try to put a little bit more human uh, spin in it instead of like, Hey, I want to get on a call so I can sell you my services. I, I don't even want to listen to you, <laughs> but if it's like, Hey, I, I'd love to see how we can collaborate. Uh, um, you know, you seem like someone that we could have a genuine relationship with a uh, genuine connection um, mm -hmm. and not leading with a sale up front or even that idea, but like, Hey, right. how can we help each other in some level, you know, and yeah. make it mutual too. Um, Cause I think, I think people don't realize too, other people want to help you as well. Um, but if they're being sold to it, it's a different, it, it, it could kind of change that relationship. Yeah. Um, but even, even like copy, like, you know, I, I get, we all get LinkedIn messages that are like, you know, a book long. And I'm like, I don't even know what the whole point of that is, right. you know, make it very concise of like, why you want to reach out? What, why do you think we, we have, uh, you know, a connection. Um, and also like a lot of the automation out there works, but, um, you know, we, we've, we've just started been playing with this, like, uh, making some of the copy, uh, with spelling errors that almost makes, and th that's kind of a new thing that we've been trying out. Um, we've been getting a little bit more higher response on that too. So it's really, really showing that human side. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely not canned. If you notice the, a little typo in there or something, you know? Right. It's like, oh yeah, he did it fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's pretty wild. Um, tell me about your transition from sales to sales leadership. What was that like for you? Uh, yeah, I think um, moving to more of a, a sales leadership because, you know, over the years, I've always had to do the outbound sales and, you know, get in touch with people, but more of that sales leadership is more of, uh, of building and helping your peers grow. Um, and, you know, being that thought leader out there of like, you know, for me, it doesn't, it, it, it comes pretty natural on that side of it, just because I don't like the opposite of it. I don't like people calling me and just like, you know, not even knowing what company I'm, I am, like, why would my service be a benefit? <laughs> um, and I think, um, you know, moving to that side is uh, just be more that the leader of that, of, uh, you know, helping my team grow. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if that answered it, but yeah. Oh, no, that's great. That's great. Um, was it a difficult transition for you? Or was it, it sounded like it was pretty natural. I think it was pretty natural. I, you know, for me, I'm, I'm a mix of an introvert and an extrovert. I, I need a little of both. So it's like, I can stay in my introvertness, uh, you know, while we're doing the harder work. And then when I need to get out there, I can, um, uh, you know, 
be that more leader. But I think it's, you know, I don't look at it as like a sales leader. I think it's just being a leader in general. Uh, you know, the simple concept of, you know, treat others like you want to be treated. And uh, I think that's how I've, we've grown, you know, kind of, uh, my staffing business with experiential is, you know, we want, we were hiring people at four hour, four hour blocks. And how do you get someone to show up at, at, on time, sober, that represents the brand across the country, say 200 people. Yeah. Um, and it really comes down to respect and, um, you know, you know, what, what do they need to make sure they're going to continue uh, being successful. And I think, uh, it, it's as long when you're looking at the overall view, it's, it's a lot easier to, to provide that. So. so when you're working with your customers, how are you helping them? How are you guiding them in sales leadership? You know, I think, um, with our customers, you know, how, how we're helping them grow, you know, almost as not telling, uh, how to do it, but actually listening on what their problems are, what problems, um, what what problems that we can help solve. Um, I think it's I think the the value approach of like, hey, I'm here to help you instead of like selling. I'm going to actually give you some antidotes to help you get to that next level. Um, and I think it's you know. And it comes back to that human side, right? Like someone doesn't want to sit here and listen to someone just like, I have the best of this and this. Um, well, that might not even portray to them. You know, uh, if, if you understand your customer's problem um, and really dive in and like, why is that a problem? Where can we find, uh, you know, things to fix that problem to help them grow? They're going to be more agitated to, to listen. Um, yeah than just us telling. It, it sounds like your coaching approach, what you do with your customers is very analogous to um, how you should be selling to people. It's really listening, understanding what their problems are and how you can deliver value. 100%. And, and obviously the stuff I do is a lot of relationship building too, because you know a relationship I've had 10 years ago could pop up any day now and, oh, hey, I remember you. Uh, and, and understanding like, uh, oh, I wasn't sold to, I was, I was actually providing high value and Hey, let's give this guy a chance again to talk. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really important to maintain and cultivate that your network like that, especially those old contacts that I haven't talked to in a while, just do that, reach out and say, Hey, it's been a while. How are you doing? Exactly. You and never know what's going to come out of that. A hundred percent. And we were, uh, my team was just talking about that, uh, the other day is like, you know, we, we, we have some copy that, Hey, telling people about our new, new company and how we're going. And it, it got, it got feedback, but you know, the way I build relationships is, you know, I could text someone like the, that's really, that's where I want to get to. It's like, I want to provide enough value that, Hey, I can just like, I just want to say, Hey, let's just get on a call. Happy new year. Want to see how you're doing. So, yeah. um, yeah. Yeah. And that's so important. That's when you really are building that relationship. Um, I like that. I haven't heard that before. We, I can text you. That is, that separates you from everybody else. Like I'm willing to get that personal with you. Right. Um, for uh, anyone considering sales leadership, um, what th should they be thinking about? Um, I think in, in what context for uh, just like, you know, jumping I'm, in? Yeah, I'm crushing it in sales, but I want more. I want I, maybe I think I'm good for being a sales leader. What should I be thinking about to really prepare myself for that transition into sales leadership? Because it is so different from being a salesperson. Hundred percent, and I think that's on all different levels, like whether it's leadership or operations. But I think understanding that you know you're you're going to be in more of a manager role, overseeing obviously, you know, numbers, uh, you know, how many outbounds are going uh, and kind of following that. Um, but I think being able to, to understand the overall value of that um, and to be able to help coach your team um, to, 
to grow as well and being available. Uh, you know, it's, it's definitely, in my opinion, more stressful than actually a salesperson. Um, Cause a salesperson can just, you know, make calls all day and really build that re relationship. But you're, you're changing the concept of like, well, you know, we all, we need to close deals, but we, we need to do it in an approach where I'm not desperate um, because the, the last thing is like, Hey, you know, Chris, you know, I need, I need to make this sale by the end of the month and we need to close this. Um, you know, th I think there's a lot of coaching that can go involved in that. Um, and um, I, I think it's making sure that person's ready to take that next step yeah. of, uh, of growth. Um, obviously there, there's, there can be, a, a better uh, money potential because typically you're, you have a, an openness for your whole team. But um, yeah, I think just on having that more manager mentality is going to be key. Right. 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 The uh, um, what are you think are some of the common mistakes that sales leaders make and what do you recommend for them to learn from those mistakes and, and overcome them? Um, so what we like to do is um, everyone's going to, you know, we're human, right? I mean, back to that, like we're going to make mistakes on all levels. Um, and, and I think in, um, being able to fail, uh, being able to allow your team to fail, but to learn from those failures. And yeah. it's almost something that I, I recommend tracking uh, those failures. Say you're, you lost this big deal. Why did you lose that deal? Well, uh, you know, I would try to get on the phone with them again, or at least just get a little bit more feedback. You know, look, I've, I've, we've been in this, we've been chatting for three months. You know, I know we, we, we didn't win it, but I'm trying to help myself grow. So I think understanding that feedback, tracking it, and then um, figuring out a solution to, to overcome that moving forward. Because I think yeah. from an overall strategy that it's not just going to help you, your manager, but it's going to help the whole team grow um, yep. and, and and help help everything. So yeah, it's definitely going to help the sales leader too. If you're capturing that insight, then they have that opportunity to co help coach you as to you know, okay, next time we come up with this, let's try this. You know, exactly. yep. and I'm I'm a big proponent from a CRM perspective of tracking all your losses because if you're not tracking it you're never going to be able to go back and do that retrospective and that a deep analysis to understand and look for those patterns of, you know, we keep losing deals to this competitor. Why? Um, what do we need to change or, you know, pricing, product mix, whatever. Um, what can we do to begin to compete uh, and win those deals? So very yeah. important. And exactly. And that's, and that's where that, the, the CRM comes in uh, yeah. to really be able to track those and dial those in and understand the industry and things like that. So right. are there any special things you like to do to cultivate people for sales leadership? Um, I don't know if I have anything off the top of my head, uh, like cultivating them. Um, but I think it's, uh, you know, open communication is going to be very key uh, and just ensuring that, you know, it's okay to ask questions and, um, you know, um, I, and I think also understanding the data of, you know, uh, the activity they're doing, because really sales really comes down to a numbers game. If you're, if you're making sure you're selling to the right client mm -hmm. uh, and you have the right target market, that you're, you're going after. And, and it's a problem that needs to be solved. And, uh, I think, yeah, I, I, I think just being able to be able to track, uh, successes to failures is going to be very key. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, what, what are the signs you look for that says, Hey, this person's ready for sales leadership. What are you looking for? Um, I think seeing someone that, that can work, they can take the initiative of growth on their own and not needing handholding. And like, right. um, I think almost an entrepreneur level spirit, uh, someone that's very driven, 
that is very passionate too. I mean, obviously, you know, there's salespeople that are selling things that they're not passionate about, but they do it. Um, and that's not a sales leader. Um, but I think uh, being able to, um, being able to go beyond uh, just doing the job and thinking outside the box because, you know, sending emails and phone calls are great, but what else can you do? Uh, you know, ex especially when you get the deal. I mean, that's, that's the most important thing in my opinion. Once you get the deal, there's more opportunities to not just keep that deal, but to get referred to uh, because you've already built that relationship. You've built that value. Um, and what other ways can you help uh, help uh, the company grow and help even your growth? Um, and just understanding, you know, there's there's not just one way of like selling to someone. It's it's yep. it's the whole uh, the duration of that relationship. Yep, I think that's really important, and that's something I want to pick up in our next topic when we talk about CRM. Um, so let me ask you: When it comes to CRM, do you love it or do you hate it? I, I like it. Uh, I, 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 the reason why I say that is, is, is there's a lot of more steps to do it, to yep. get into the CRM, but I, I understand the value of it. Right. right? Cause right. Um, you know, before I had a CRM, it was an Excel file. I had my list right. of clients and you know, who I need to go after. And, um, but now I'm, I'm a huge proponent of it. Uh, you know, we're yesterday, we were literally making our sales funnel of like, uh, you know, after a meeting, we have a, 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 a an email going out. We have a reminder to, to call someone, and just yep. keeping that uh, those touch points because yep. uh, you know it depends on what industry. Some some industries are are quick uh, sales processes. You know, the B two B services. You know, they could be ninety days, one hundred twenty days, and yep. really the key thing is just staying in front of them. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, I think there's so much value to that, uh, all, yeah. all across the board. What has been your biggest struggle, uh, or, or maybe what you think is a common struggle people have when it comes to CRM and being a sales leader? Um, I think one is just using the system properly across your company. Um, because I think. I see a CRM as, you know, a full company wide system. Uh, it, it's not just the sales side. It's, you know, you got to get the operations people to understand, you know, tell you what's going on in this deal before you call them, uh, you know, and trying to upsell things. So I think, you know, really comes down to just the communication and, and understanding what's happening, um, you know, and then just using, uh, using software to your uh, benefit to grow. Um, you know, there's so many automations that you can do that can be humanized um, and reminders to stay in touch and, and yep. things like that. So yeah, I love that. I I don't know if you saw me. I'm going like yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, and because that that actually you couldn't have teed me up better for my next question because you know one of my uh, my struggles is, you know, when we work with clients, one of the first questions I ask when we're doing discovery is, you know, what happens when that deal is closed in your CRM? You know, is that customer transitioning to the next handoff, you know, the operations team or customer success, whoever it is that now is going to manage that relationship? And so I couldn't agree with you more that CRM needs to be not just the sales team, but extended throughout the company, especially anyone who's interacting with the customer, because your cap, the sales team is capturing so much good data about that customer, their struggles, their pain points, all of that. The next people that are going to manage that relation, they need to know all that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So what are you guys doing in your company? Can you talk a little bit about your approach and your, you know, like, uh, it sounds like it's very collaborative in terms of how you're implementing and growing your CRM with your team? Yeah. Um, so the way we're implementing uh, is, you know, obviously we're using it to, to uh, for prospecting um, and keeping in touch. 
uh, and just, you know, having those reminders of continuing to have those touch points. Um, but I think it's it, it, like kind of back, you know, back to an overall strategy of growing a business, you know, usually there's a, a year goal, like how, uh, of where you need to be at. Well, to get to that goal, you need, you, you need to have so many reach outs. Uh, so many reach outs will get you meetings. The meetings will get you proposals. And then the proposal is the big deal. If, if you can get, you know, if you can close 25% or 30% of your proposals uh, and you, you all already understand how many reach outs you have to get to that point, right. it's so valuable, you know, from an overall strategy. Um, and um, it's it just gonna help with better decision-making uh, better for growth. Um, you know, we're, we're also implementing some of the marketing email strategies with that, uh, cause I've, you know, it's managed through that, but I think, um, you know, the way we're doing things is we don't like to do like when we do the, the marketing side, we, we don't like to do the spray and pray approach. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, especially with what we do because we're so focused and, what we're hoping to do is really send out targeted um, emails and create these uh, personal personas right. per client where a CRM can track that and, you know, almost tee up your sales team to have uh, content to be able to send to a CEO uh, and right. all their problems they have to, you know, a lower person, that type of thing. So yeah, yeah, uh, that, that's how we're using it. Sounds like you have a great approach um, with all of that. Um, do you have any advice for someone that um, needs or wants to engage their team better? Maybe they're having some user adoption issues. People just aren't using it like they hoped. Any advice for people? Yeah, and uh, I mean, that's something I've been dealing with for years because I'm, I'm a tech guy and I like systems. Um, but it can be overloaded uh, with the team to use it. And I think it's just making sure that there's touch points of like saying why we're using it and helping them understand like, oh, it, it's Joey again. He's giving us a new system to use because, you know, he's a nerd. Well, no, it's more of like, why are we doing this? You know, from a higher level, we, we need to do this. And I think it's, you know, be able to implement um more training and um, just uh, touch points probably per, per week at, and months to, yep. to get to that point to start using it and, yep. you know, doing check-ins. Yes, it, it, it does um, provide a little bit more work, but in the long run, you know, the, the only number that matters is that bottom line number. So uh, that's, right. and that's especially, uh, you know, keeping your job. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I love what you're saying. I, I tell that to people all the time that you have to have a why. But sometimes it's more than one why you might have to have multiple. Um, but people understand need to understand not only, um, you know, the benefits for the company, this is why it's strategic for our vision and what we're trying to do our strategy. But it's also communicating it at that human level. Um, because we all want to know what's in it for me or how's this going to help me do my job better. And so having that conversation and that dialogue and understanding that user and what they're worried about their concerns and making it relatable to them is so important to driving that adoption and your overall success. So I really, I love your approach. I think that's spot on. Yeah. Thanks. I think it works too. And, and just being yeah upfront with them too, and, yep. you know, having, you know, having goals and quotas that kind of align with the CRM too. I think that's, yep. that's definitely key. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Joey, it's been great talking with you. We're coming up on our time here for Sales Lead Dog. If people want to get in touch with you and learn, you know, connect with you, learn more about uh, Unicorn Puff, what's the best way for them to reach out and connect? Yeah, um, they can, you can go to uh, Unicorn Puff dot com or uh, send us send me an email on it's joey at unicornpuff.com even search me up on LinkedIn uh, I'm always open to to discuss and and help people uh, grow in their journey yeah that's awesome well thank you again for being on sales lead dog it's been great talking with you you too thanks Chris as we end this discussion on sales lead dog be sure to subscribe to catch all our episodes on social media follow us on LinkedIn. Facebook, and Instagram. 
watch the videos on YouTube. And you can also find our episodes on our website at impellercrm.com forward slash sales lead dog. Sales lead dog is supported by Impeller CRM, delivering objectively better CRM for business, guaranteed.